be records, huh? Yeah, well, Sonny figures it's time for me to start learning some of the business angles. Right. And think of the jump you'll have on all those spuds slaving away in college. Yo, Luke! Got a present for you. Get along, little doggies. Oh, man, that's ugly. Yeah, but it's primo. It's a great hunk of beef. Uh, would you mind? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, how much is your generosity gonna cost me? Nothing. Man owed me a favor. Big favor. Big man. And besides, what's a guy like me gonna do with a, a quarter of a cow? Oh, got something else for you. I can hardly wait. Hey, Gino! What do you think he wants? I know what he wants. He wants a job. Take a look at this. Holy cow, this guy <laughs> wasn't kidding. Holy cow. <laughs> Oh, move yeah. them up and get them out here, Pilgrim. Yeah. Here you go. That's another favor? Yeah, well, I've yeah. got uh, people want to do me favors all the time. Hey, Gino, how you doing? There you go. Right. Hey. There you go. Thanks a lot. Sure. That uh, uh, yeah, Stone's a good cat. Yeah. He's working his tail off this morning when you weren't around. Plug, the place is shaping up. I'm really impressed. Well, good. It better shape up. We're opening soon. Yeah. Well, uh, you got your work cut out for you. You, uh, you know what you need, don't you? I got a feeling I'm gonna find out. You need a mate or day. What do you say? Look, Mike, I'm not trying to do like a Vegas showroom here, you know? It's just a nice blues club in Port Charles. Yes, I know. But there's your basic blues dive, or there's your classy uptown nightclub. It's up to you. Well, I'm talking classy, but casual. Well, who's going to meet and greet your customers? That would be me. You're joking. You're not joking. All right, let me lay this out for you. Uh, let's say the joint is jumping. Uh, you're overbooked by maybe uh, a half a dozen tables, and you're praying for a cancellation. Your artist is complaining about the size of his dressing room and the quality of the champagne, which, by the way, he's not paying for. And then somehow, someone gets a hold of a bad piece of fish while Gino is in the kitchen, weeping his eyes out because he's got marital problems. I'm gonna kill myself now. Well, <laughs> sure, look, it's, it's a worst-case scenario, but it could happen. And who's going to watch the door while you're dealing with these crises? Who's going to know your high rollers from your regular Joes when they walk in without a reservation? I mean, I don't care how good you are. You can't do it all by yourself, Luke. You need someone who's been there. Someone you can trust to handle things the way you would. I'll think about it. You open soon. I said I'll think about it. Where do I reach you? I can reach you. I'll, uh, I'll come by tomorrow. Okay. Thanks for the beef. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> hey, Stone, try to talk some sense into your boss, will you? Hey, good seeing you, Gino. Bye-bye, sure. guys. Sure. You really think he knows what's what? He talks a damn good game. see some matches here. There we go. What's that? That, my friend, is Mike Corbin's resume. I think it's time we did a little reference check. Corbin. C-O-R-B-I-N. He's not your maitre d'. He never was. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Well, okay, thanks. Never, never mind. I'm afraid to ask. Ah, you know, all his resume is good for her is lighting the fire. <laughs> I never heard of him. You ever hear of chutzpah? <laughs> That's Mike. He's got chutzpah, man. Huevos rancheros. Hello, favorite brother-in-law. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, well, one of the uh, little ones at the Bradley Ward house has a mama who's not feeling so great. 
And Luke is so wrapped up in opening up his club, he doesn't even notice I'm missing. Don't you believe it for a minute. <laughs> oh, well, uh, we're counting on seeing you at, at the opening. It should be a sensational evening. To tell you the truth, it looks like you could use one. Don't it, though? Oh, come on now. What's up? Uh, we had one of our sessions with Kevin this morning. Ouch. It's more than ouch. Kevin swears that in order to move forward, we have to move backward. And I swear that sometimes it feels like we're just going around in circles and it's all about the same thing. It's just the blame game. Yeah, well, that's a hard one to let go of. Yep. Every time that it feels like Bobby is about to accept some responsibility, she just can't quite do it. And today's culprit was Lucy. Can you imagine that? Like I want to waste my time and my money discussing Lucy Coe in therapy? Lucy? Yeah. Apparently, uh, she's the reason for all our problems, you see. And because of her bet with Damien. And every time I tried to just get a little bit rational with it, suddenly Bobby says, well, you know, you're defending Lucy, and you and Kevin are ganging up on me, and she left in a huff, and... Oh, no. And, uh, it's the middle of the session. Uh, you figure it out. Maybe I can. Imagine how Bobby must have felt walking into our house and finding us having dinner with Lucy and Kevin. Truthfully, I can't, though, because it is hardly a secret that those two are seeing each other. It has nothing to do with us, and who's to say that we are supposed to dictate our therapist's love life, much less who he chooses to have dinner with? But it's more than that. I mean, there are probably only a couple of places where Bobby feels safe right now. One of them is in therapy, and one of them is in the heart of her family, her own brother. And Lucy, who seems to have trouble making friends at the best of times, has suddenly inserted herself into the most intimate areas of Bobby's life. It's her support system. I mean, she's gotta feel like the bottom is dropping out of her world all right i can see some truth in that but i still think that bobby is using that as an excuse for not working things out just so she can put the blame on somebody else stop it tony you're doing the same thing aren't you blaming her well for not taking responsibility i am well that's fine but you have to accept the fact that she is in pain and, and she's entitled to that pain. Yeah, but aren't we all? Absolutely. And you and I have discussed the uh, difficulties of being married to our particular spouses. Yeah. It's called the Spencer Curse. No. <laughs> really, I think that this is the most difficult part of any marriage. Accepting your mate for who they are. Sometimes I feel like Popeye. I am what I am. And Bobby is willing to love you to make it work. Can you say the same thing? I like little cuff shoes, Sam. Uh... I remember. I got a very nice herringbone tweed you might be interested in, Sonny. No, 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 I'm not big on herringbone. Oh, it's good quality and very reasonably priced. Cost isn't the issue. Oh, is that right? You've come a long way since buying off the rack in Bensonhurst. Yeah. Next thing you'll know, you'll be uh, wanting me to call you Mr. Corinthos. Uh, you've measured my inseam. You've earned the right to call me Sonny. <laughs> it's open. Hey, whoa. What's up? Luke Spencer, say hello to Sam Hirsch. Hi. Sam the tailor. I should have known, huh? You know, Sam, you're doing a great job. You're transforming my partner into a fashion mogul. So, what's the harm? You tell him, Sam. It's a whole new era. Sam closed his shop back home. He's a... Uh, customized only. Ah. He's an artist, believe me. I'm just a haberdasher, <laughs> that's all. Well, what do you think, sonny boy? You're the best. You should take advantage of him while you're still here, Luke. It's not every day you open your own club. About once a decade. Can you handle a rush job? I rushed. End of the week. Let me finish up with my boy here. Why don't you look at my fabric samples <laughs> over there? 
Listen, I have a very nice herringbone tweed you might be interested in. Ugh. Hey. You can't even give away the herringbone, Sam. <coughs> yeah, shows what you people know. It was good enough for Mick. As in Jagger? Yeah, he wanted the leather, but I talked him into the herringbone. What's he like? So skinny. <laughs> well, that does it. Good old Sam. Hey. How's Stone doing? Mm. I left him downstairs unsupervised. Hey, you don't think he's going to take the getaway car and disappear into the woods, do you? No, no, he's a, he's a great kid. He, he's been bugging me lately to find something useful for him to do. Is he bored? No, I think it has something to do with a girl. Uh, I need to impress. Don't you hate it when that happens? I'm going to have plenty for him to do once we open. Well, don't get too attached. I'm looking to pull him into L LMB. Hmm? You know, ground floor stuff. He's smart. He'll work his way up. I like this. Top of the line. Mm -hmm. Most expensive, too. Good. Luke Spencer and GQ. Who would have guessed it? Me. Hey, man, that's like <laughs> the natural state of things. Friday morning. Uh, that gives me a little time in case we need final alterations, okay? Okay, sir. Okay, Sonny. Thanks a Nice lot. meeting you, Luke. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Great guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I gotta tell you something. I really, uh, I like the way this thing is turning out. Is that so? You know, Sonny, I never had a partner before that I was totally comfortable with. Except a man named Robert Scorpio. And my wife, of course. <laughs> but I really like this, man. I really, yeah. uh, I like, I like it. I like the way it's all turned out. Optimistic man. Am I not allowed that luxury once in a while? Club hasn't even opened yet. A mere technicality, Holmes. Unless you know something that you haven't told. Not at all. Then we got no problem. Cool. Oh, man, this feels good, you know. I got me a new handmade suit. I got me a new club. I got me B.B. King live on opening night. Yes. Poor Charles is damn lucky to have Luke Spencer around <laughs> these days. I am... <laughs> Did you tell me Kuzak had gone? How, how would I know? I mean, I'm not expecting a postcard. But you did say he left town. Yeah, quickly. Because he's back. You kidding me? I kid you not. I saw him not a half an hour ago, dining at his regular table at the back of the no name. <sighs> you see? Not that I know of. Look, Sonny, maybe I'm making a deal out of this. I mean, it could be nothing. He could be planning to chase ambulances and stay out of your head. Well, let him chase ambulances in, in Cincinnati. I don't like that he's in my town, and I don't like that he's ignored my request. See what you can find out. I'm on it. Watch your back, Aaron. Well, why else would I have eyes in the back of my head? <laughs> 